Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to build a simple call center model. The scenario has been taken from simulation with Arena textbook and it's from chapter five where in the book, uh, the authors have discussed about developing moderate size Arena model using advanced process panel, block panel, block template, as well as using some uh, modules from basic process panel. So we'll be learning about how to use decide module to create three-way decisions based on chance as well as based on condition. We'll learn about how to define variable and how to change the value of this variable when we require. We'll know about how to express uh, a formula using expression module and how to use storage. What is the difference between terminating and steady state operation? How to create logical or control entities to control the values of variable in a model as we require, as well as we learn some uh, basic things, what we need to put in terminating condition uh, in the run setup uh, tab. So this is a block diagram for the whole system. So customers will be called. Before we talk about this block diagram, let's just think like, for example, um, you have purchased uh, electronics from one of the reputed company, let's say company A, and then you are calling them to get some tech support. Or maybe you are calling them to know your order status, or maybe you're just calling them before purchasing some, purchasing your device from company A. So this system is like that. So people will be calling, and then the first thing they will listen is an automatic recording, where the computer will play a recording and would ask the calling population, calling entity, to select the menu as they want. So there are three options to select from. Either customers can select tech support system uh, division of the company, or they might opt for uh, calling salespeople, or they might just call to know the order status of their order. So after the selection based uh, on the, like after, the, after listening based on the selection, calls will be forwarded accordingly. And if people are here for tech support, then they're gonna listen to another recording, whether like what kind of product, sub, what kind of product they have and what kind of support they require. So for this simple model, let's say this company A has three kinds of product lines, product A, product two, product, product one, product two, product three. And each of them has expert, text to provide the support. So after listening to this uh, tech-based product selection recording, people will um, select the appropriate um, menu and then they will be forwarded to the text. Next, if they're here for service, sales service support, they'll be forwarded to this department and one of the sales representative will answer their call. If they're just here for knowing the order status, they will come by, listen to an automatic recording. And even after, if they want to talk with someone, they will be diverted to the sales representative. And if they opt that they don't want to talk with someone, they're happy with this. After knowing their um, order status, they will leave the system. So over here we can see, so sales reps are tackling both sales service call as well as order status call, which requires to communicate with a representative. However, we'll see, oh, I have it here. So sales call will have a higher priority over order status call, which will require a salesperson. All right, so let's see a little bit more details so there will be 26 trunk lines 
one needed for each call. So usually we are given with a toll free number, right? We call over there and then we book one of the trunk line. After that, we listen to the recording and we select the option based on why we are calling the company. So this small company has 26 trunk lines and they will be used for incoming or outgoing call. Either someone is talking with the calling population or not, or whether the call is on hold or not. It will be engaged. Whenever a call is, call will be our entity here. Whenever a call is inside our system. Arriving call finding no free trunk line gets busy signal and they just goes away. So for this simple model, there is no holding. If, if all the line, all, all of these 26 lines are busy, then the call will be bought, like people will hang up. And we will count the number of rejected calls. Next, we have calls arrive, arrival with inter-arrival time, which is exponentially distributed with a mean of 0.857 minutes. And the first call will be created at zero minutes. There are three kinds of call that I previously uh, mentioned, and this is the um, initial recording delay, delay time. And around 76% of the call are here for tech support. Sales is just 16% and just knowing order status, 8% of the total calling population will be calling to this call center. And just pause the video and just have a look to know the probability and the distribution for tech support calls, cell support call. And then also know about order status call. And here we can see that the center receives calls between 8 a.m. till 6 p.m., which is around 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 around 10 hours, exactly 10 hours. So exactly after 10 hours, the arrival is stopped. However, operation will keep on going up until all the work in progress calls have, has been, have been served. So it will run beyond 10 hours up until all the entities are flashed out of our system. So this is the basic uh, information that we have about the system. For detailed, please go ahead and review chapter five of simulation with ARENA textbook. So now I'll start modeling in ARENA. I'll minimize this window and then I'll go open ARENA. Okay, so I have already saved my model. I highly request all of you to save your model as well. So in between, if it crashes, you have something where you can keep on building your model. Okay, so I'll have my basic process panel opened here. There will be a hand, there will be a couple of uh, resources here, variables and attributes. That's why before starting the modeling, I will go ahead and create those data for the model that we'll be using. So let's go ahead and create the variables first. I went to the data module, variable data module. The first variable I'll be creating is calls are arrival. Okay. And I won't initial I will initialize, sorry, I will initialize its value to one. Next, I'll create a variable called max calls, and then I'll initialize it to a very big number. Okay. Next, I'll create another variable called total WIP. WIP stands for working process or work in progress. So calls per arrival, usually inside create module, we find a blank to provide how many entities will be created per arrival. Instead of just initializing the number in that blank, we have created a variable to initialize that number because 
our model will run for 10 hours. Exactly at 10 hours, we are gonna cut down arrival or creation of new entities. That's why we are using a variable here. Next, max call. Usually we put infinite in the uh, maximum entities uh, blank inside create module. However, we're initializing to it to a very big number. Exactly after 10 hours of operation, we are gonna change this number so that no more entities are created. And then working process is simply gonna count the total number of calls that has entered the system so far. That's why uh, initially there'll be no, none of the calls in the system. That's why I didn't initialize any value. However, it will by default be initialized to zero. Okay. Next, I'll go to resource. The first resource we'll be creating is trunk line. And we'll have 26 of them in this simple system. Next, I'm gonna create a resource called tech one and initialize the capacity to two. Next, I'll create another resource called tech two, initialize its value to three. And then take three, sorry, take three will be also initialized to value of three. Lastly, we will initialize another resource called cells and initialize its value to four. So take one, we'll have three, we'll have two resources labeled as take one who will be taking care of take calls arriving to the system to get service about product one. Same for take two. So whichever call will be coming for getting service for product two will be forwarded to one of these three agents or three associates. Same for take three and sales, we have four of them. So they will be attaining the sales call as well as they will be attaining any order status call which will require talking with a real person. Okay. Next, we'll go ahead and create an attribute called my priority. Priority in sales queue. Okay. So this attribute, we can reassign its value to assign priority to the sales call as well as the order status call, which will require to be forwarded to the sales representative. So as I mentioned, sales call will have a high priority. So using this attribute, we can do that. All right, so we have created an attribute, we have created three variables and we have created uh, five resources. Next, we'll go ahead and start modeling. First of all, we'll get a create module. I'll double click and we'll create incoming error calls arrival. Entity type will be incoming calls. Just to let you know, there might be a little bit dissimilarity between the name that I'll be using or the module that I'll be using in this video with the textbook. However, the cons however conceptually, both like my model and the book model is same. However, but just to show you a different functionality, some different functionalities, um, I'll be showing uh, how we could use other modules that has not been referenced in the textbook. Okay, value would be 5.857 minutes. Entities per arrival, I'll go inside build expression. I have created a variable called calls per arrival and initialize it to one. So it's just instead of putting one here, we used a variable which we could change later on. Max arrivals, we have created another variable called max calls. 
So using that first creation at zero. So we are done with the create module. Next, we are gonna get a record module and place it just after this create module. Inside this record module, the task would be to count the number of total attempted calls. So we want to know, we want to report the total attempted calls because some of them can get through, some of them will be declined because all of the trunk line might be busy at some instance. So it will be a count statistics and we will name this counter as total attempted calls. Or let's just name it attempted calls. And okay. Next, we're gonna create, get an assign module. Sorry, we'll get a decide module, not an assign. Get a decide module. And then connect the output of the record. Next, we're gonna get, we're gonna go to advanced process and then we're gonna get this C's module. And place it right here. Before editing this decide, let's go ahead and edit our seize module. So the purpose of the seize module is to seize the trunk line. So I'll name this seize trunk line. And I'll add a resource, resource would be trunk line. And one of it will be um, seize, so it's one. So when we, whenever we uh, give the name of a sys module automatically a queue is created just like our process module so we'll go ahead and click ok next i'll connect the output of this decide with this in with the input of this sys and now i'm gonna edit my decide module so what we are deciding here we are deciding calls enter the system, like whether the call could enter the system or not. Or we could name it as well as like trunk line three. Okay. And then in type, we have to select two way by condition. If would be expression. And then in the value section, we'll go to build expression. It's always safe to go inside build expression to reference your variable or attribute because even for a small space, you might get an error after building a big model. So I would highly suggest to use build expression um, to reference automatic, uh, automatic variables that Arena create for us or whatever we have created. Okay. We'll go inside. We'll, so under basic process variable, we will go to resource. We'll go to usage then. Then current number busy of trunk line, if is less than current number scheduled. So how many trunk line we have scheduled in the system? 26. And we and they're of fixed capacity. So it basically means if we have one free trunk line out of whatever we have, a call can enter the system. So we could have just typed it in. However, I just wanted to show you how we can come here and use and reference this variable directly. All right, let me go ahead. And why I used less than, why I haven't used less than or equal to, because even if 26 of the trunk lines are busy, a call can't enter, right? That's why it's less than, it's not less than or equal to. So make sure you are using the inequalities correctly. Next, we'll go to basic process and get a record module. And then by default, my decide module was pre-selected. That's why it got connected with the input of this record. So what we'll be recording here, we'll be recording 
the total number of declined calls or total number of rejected calls. Let's go ahead and it will be also a count and we will count, we'll name this counter as rejected calls. Next, we'll get a dispose. And name it customer hang, hands up. Like they couldn't get a hold to enter the system. All right. We'll get one more assign module and place it after the seize module. Double click on it and we will name this assign as increment total WIP. As the name suggests, we'll be incrementing our total WIP variable. So the new value would be total WIP plus one. Or alternatively, we can go to build expression and from here, we can reference calls per arrival because we have created a variable, right? So it's initialized at one, but after 10 hours of, of, of operation, it's gonna get a different value. It's gonna become zero, which we will eventually see. So instead of just putting one, you can just reference this. So now it's initialized to one. Sometimes we might use an expression to control calls per arrival. Maybe, uh, maybe let's say we're using a uniform distribution for where arrival is uniformly distributed between two and five. So every time an entity is created, a new number will be generated from that distribution. So instead of just typing in one, if we reference that expression here, uh, or a ver that variable here, then it will be more meaningful to us. So instead of just one, then we'll be adding up the number of arrivals that will be created by each arriving entity and so on. Let's go ahead and click yes. Okay. And next we'll click okay. After that, I'll get a process module and place it right after this assign. And then this process would be named as initial recording delay. So what will happen here? People will call and then listen to the operate, uh, listen to the automatic uh, recorded message from the company, and then they will be selecting the menu. So that that process is described here. There is no need of any resource here. That's why action would be just delay, not cease delay release, because we have already ceased the trunk line ahead of time. So we don't need any more um, resource here. All right. Next, the time is uniformly distributed between 0 0.1 and 0 0.6 minutes. And allocation would be other. As we don't have uh, any resource involved here, let's say for this call center, this process is not a value added process. So that's why we have entered it inside other. Let's go ahead and click OK. Next, so they will listen to the menus. Next, what will happen? The decision will be made, right? Yes. So I'll place this decide module here. And connect the output of this delay over here. So what we'll be deciding here, call type. And we'll select n way by chance. So far we have seen how to use two way by chance, now n way by chance. Why? Because we have to create three alternative options. Either the calls are here for tech department, or they're here for sales, or they're here for order status call. So the first one, I think 76% of the call will be here for tech support, 16% for sales, 
and rest for order status. We don't need to write the last one. Arena automatically does it for us. I'll click OK. OK. I'll just zoom out a little bit and I'll just pull this decide module right on this side. Okay. I'll get a box so that it's easy to differentiate between the logics of different department. I'll just create a text called tech support logic and place the text here. Double click, I'll just increase the front font a little bit. 20. Click OK. All right. First thing first, we have we'll get a assign module. And then we will connect the first output of the decide module with this assign module. So what we'll be assigning here? We'll be assigning take call entity type and picture so we'll go ahead and click add and select entity type so what kind of entity will be creating here creating take call so whatever entity comes out of this decide module loop will be getting a new name called take call and then just for better visualization you can go ahead and select different pictures for your tech call entity. We just selected yellow ball as the picture. Okay, so after they entered the uh, tech support logic, the customer will be directed to listen to another automatic recording. So we'll na name, this pro name this process as automatic take call selection delay. So there are three kinds of product that this company deals for tech support. So customer needs to select the menu accordingly. And this delay is also uniformly distributed between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. And this will be also served as other in the allocation category. I'll click OK. Next, I'll get a decide module. So after listening to this um, initial recording, people will, uh, initial take recording, people will select the appropriate menu for what they are here for. So let's just name it, um, take, uh, sorry, let's just say product type. Let's just name it take product. So 25% of them are for product type one. Sorry, I'll just select N way by chance. 25% of them are for product type one, 34% are for product type two. All right. And the last are for product type three. Next, we will get three processes. Process one, and I'll connect the, out, the first output of this decide module with the input of this process module. And then we'll name this module as product one process. And the action will be cease delay release this time because call will be seizing one of the tech one of the representative from tech one group. Click OK. And then we'll create an expression, we'll select expression unit as minutes. And this will be a value added service. However, before writing anything, I'll just click OK. And then I'll go to advanced process panel. I'll go to expression. I'll create a new expression called tech time. Expression value would be triangularly distributed between 3, 6, and 18. So the tech support 
call either for product one, two, or three is triangularly distributed between three minutes, most likely value of six minutes, and max of 18 minutes. So I'll come back over here and in expression, I'll go to build expression. And then in, from expression, I'll select the value of take time. Okay. Next, I'll just copy this process, paste it, and then I'll copy it one more time and paste it here because we have three products, so we'll have three processes. And then I'll, before I forget, I'll connect the decide module with the input of this process modules. So over here, this is for product to process. And then take group two will be selected. Expression will be same. And then the last one would be to process product type three calls. And take group three will be used. Let's go ahead and click OK. OK. So after this, people are free to grow. Right. However, keep in mind, though they are releasing, seizing, getting processed and releasing the tech people here, but they have a trunk line which needs to be released. But we'll do that logic later on. Let's just build all of these three areas first and then we will do the call departure logic. I'll just copy this box. I'll just minimize this window a little bit. So I'll have access. So I'll copy this block and I'll paste it here. I'll copy this text and paste it here. Rename it to sales support logic. Okay. And then I'll get the assigned module from basic process panel. Paste it here. And then I'll get the connector and connect the second output of this decide module and put it um, connect it with the input of this assign. So what we'll be assigning here, same what we have assigned for the tech support logic. So we'll be assign, we'll be assigning sales uh, call, sales call entity type and picture. I'll go ahead and click add. Entity type would be cells. And then I'll go ahead and add one more variable. Sorry, one more um, assignment for entity picture. Let's just say we'll be using a red ball for cells call and click OK. After that, we will be selecting process module from basic process panel. Just similar to this tech support calls process we created here, we'll have sales support process. And who will be do serving these calls? Sales representatives, right? And the action will be cease delay release. And in resource, we'll select sales. And how many sales representative we have in the system? Four. We'll click OK. And the sales call is triangularly distributed between, I'll just go back to my PowerPoint one more time so that I don't mess it up. So the tech support call is triangularly distributed between 4, 15, and 45 minutes. So 4, 15, and 45 minutes. Go ahead and click OK. Next, this call will release the trunk line. So we'll leave it up to here. So we just make this box a little shorter. Okay. We'll get one more box and place it here. And what logic will be creating? Right. Order status logic. Double click here. We'll name it order status logic. First thing first, so I have shown you 
how to create this too. So I'll just copy one of them and paste it here. And then I'll connect the else output of the call type decide module 